going on, you paternal pud pullers? <laughs> Welcome to Grunt Speak. Not so. Live from the lair! Bleep glop and floop doo at your service, as always. Thank you. And today, we have an update on Charlie Jr. from Chief Kickabitch of the Slapaho Nation. We love these stories. You guys seem to love these stories. Uh, Chief Kickabitch has said that he wants to take these and put them together into like a book or something to sell them. And that's exactly what he should do because this is a terrific way to honor his best buddy. Yeah, and he should title the book like The Ultimate Honor. Yeah. Or something like that. I mean, this is this is over, over the top and, and uh, my hat's off to this guy. Are you ready to dive in? Yeah, let's we'll, do it. Let's dive in face first. Hopefully it doesn't smell like clam chowder. <clears throat> uh, no guarantees. Wouldn't it be great to have Pop as a dad? <laughs> well, too bad. We got the dads we got. Still, not everybody's dad was great, let alone good, let alone present. Matter of fact, most of the problems we face today are because we didn't have a dad. And if men don't get these vital lessons fathers used to pass on to their children, our lives will be wasted. Thankfully, these lost lessons have been conveniently recompiled in a course by Aaron Clary titled, The Dad You Never Had. Covering everything from life's purpose, defeating laziness, developing a work ethic, personal finances, career management, women, retirement planning, and much, much more. The Dad You Never Had compiles the fatherly wisdom of red pill creators such as Rolla Tomasi, Rich Cooper, Aaron Clary, and even Pop himself into an intense and thorough 12-hour course. It's the easiest and quickest way to get up to speed and get on with living life. It's no substitute for a real father, but it is the wisdom and advice you need to manage your life successfully and end the misery fatherlessness has wreaked upon your life and society. So get the roadmap to a better life. Take the dad you never had today. Your life is just too precious not to. Available on Teachable.com. Use the discount code BLAKEISCOOL to get 10% off. Link is in the meat gazer box. I was going to try to keep this short, but I decided to include an update on our relationship with Charlie and his mother. Ah, uh, the mother. The mother. I am sure she's probably a stereotyp typical dartboard for a punis. A uh, cum receptacle? Yeah, could be that. Yeah. Cum receptacle. Yes. She's getting throat yogurt on the regular. <laughs> getting her 401 cack. Got to trade it in. Got to make sure that uh, her retirement benefits are all in place. Because mm. the duh. Soaks up a lot of medical resources. Herpes, herpes, bulb, herpes. The Vada will crush you and it cause a die disease. <laughs> Either die disease or divorce. Someone's gonna die. That's why <laughs> die is in the front of the word. The keeper of the Vada works for the state legislature and accepted a promotion that she had to turn down in the past because her son came first and he was already spending too much time in daycare after school. My wife and I are happy to have him so we look after him after school and will be his guardians all day during the summer. We also agreed to care for him while she gets her MBA starting in the fall. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do to get access to the kids, so. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. In my opinion, kids spend way too much time in daycare. Yeah. Oh, amen to that. Yeah. I, I had to drop my kids at daycare when they, and it, it was heartbreaking. I hated it. Yeah. But there's nothing I could do. Yeah. Nowadays, uh, the daycare generation is a very real thing. Yep. Bunch of screaming, crying children in their 20s who, the only way that they were able to get attention as children was to throw screaming, crying, tantrum fits. And now as adults, guess what they're doing? Except those <laughs> tantrum fits burn down cities. Exactly. Just, just yeah. so we get it. You know. All in the name of diversity, equity, and inclusion, Correct. of course. As I mentioned, I bought some land outside of Austin. I used the money from the sale of my Southern California home and a rental to buy a 70-acre parcel with an abandoned 20-acre orchard on part of it. Ooh. That sounds pretty damn nice to me. Fuck yeah. We had a 30-foot by 8-foot straw bale backstop, three bales thick, put up for handgun and long gun practice. All right. Those things are heavy. Yeah. I can teach Charlie how to use a handgun, as I taught my wife, and one of my neighbors is going to teach all three of us how to use a rifle. I picked up a couple of AR-15s for me and the wife, and a 22 for Charlie to start him off. When I learn more about long guns, I'll upgrade. 
Now all I need to do is find a place where I can say I went boating. We also built a straw bale house with a full basement along with a guest cottage. The R value is around 40 to 45. You know, please email us on those plans because that sounds interesting. It does indeed. A steel barn is being delivered and installed next week. I was going to hold off in case things don't work out with my farm stand plans, but the companies that make these things are desperate and prices will only go up later, and it's cheaper than building a garage. It's amazing how expensive it is to build the most basic structures nowadays. A lot of times you got to cheat. Yeah. I think we'll just, uh, do we need a permit for that? You're gonna tax me into oblivion, hmm? Mm. Uh, catch me, bitches. Well, yeah, well, what if you just missed the call? <laughs> got thrown away in the mail <laughs> Things happen uh, Charlie's using a bow saw for several hours per week after school And on weekends, cutting tree limbs I removed And a few trees I cut down into firewood And kindling and stacking it I could easily do it with a chainsaw But I thought it better for him to work to earn some money And get some exercise Oh yeah, that's, that's yeah. awesome yeah, you don't want this kid to be like every other kid from Gen Z, or at least like 75% of them who graduate from high school unfit for military service because they look like a teardrop with arms and legs. Yeah, this is what you do. You walk up, you take away the phone. Okay. You put it in your house. You said you can check the phone at dinner and the video games four hours on Saturday, four hours on Sunday. After you get your work done. You're damn right. He was helping me haul brush to a bonfire after school three weeks ago when I cut my hand, and he asked me if it didn't hurt since I wasn't crying. I told him it hurt a lot, but that men don't cry. Then I washed my hands, taped it up, and got back to work. This is what <laughs> men do. Motherfucker! <laughs> God damn it! Ah! <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's, let's clean it up. All right. All right. That is that is how it goes. Uh, that's really it, Yeah. yeah. That's pretty much how I've cut myself a bazillion times. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, on the pilot of Lost, Jack is talking about how he screwed up a surgery, and he's like, well, you know, I decided I could either freak the hell out or I could let the fear take over for like five seconds, and then I could do my thing. <laughs> That's kind of like what happens when men hurt yeah. themselves. <laughs> All right, I'm okay now. <laughs> and we move on. You have that little that switch in your head. You're like, get it together. Uh, okay, okay. <sighs> That's like, that is a lot of blood, though. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Uh, he continues, during recess a couple weeks ago, he fell and road rashed his palms quite severely. The yard lady took him to the school nurse for treatment. The nurse told him that it must not hurt as much as she thought it should because he wasn't crying. He said, it hurts a lot, but men don't cry. <laughs> That's a good answer. He didn't even wince when she poured the disinfectant over his hands. See, when I was a kid, I always hated the disinfectant. Oh, that's good. Because I knew it was going to hurt worse. Oh. <laughs> ah! 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 Depending on what it is, yeah. Oh. Oh, we're just going to pour just pure iodine right on there. <laughs> you know, there's more of this swearing, because I was swearing as a young kid. So they, yeah. they'd call my mother, oh, you know, your, your son was in the nurse today, and uh, we're putting... Uh, you know, Benadine on one of his guts, and he said, motherfucker. I just, <laughs> I just thought you should know that. She's like, yeah, okay, I'll talk to him. Yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, well, she did. She's like, whatever. He's a kid. That's what they do. Yeah. I mean, if it hurts that bad, I'll forgive an F-bomb. Yeah. It's all good. She asked him if he wanted to go home, and he responded with, men get their hands bandaged and go back to work. <laughs> nice. She told me about it when she called me to inform me of what happened and asked if I wanted to pick him up. I told her that it was up to Charlie, so he finished the day at school. While Charlie 1.0 was embarrassed by how 2.0 turned out, I think he would have been proud of Charlie 3.0. Yeah, yeah. Sounds pretty awesome to me. A month prior to that, he had gone running to his mother crying over a carpet burn. My wife suggested that I take him out for ice cream while she spoke to D. Nice about how coddling boys his age makes them weak and effeminate. Mm -hmm. And if you raise them like girls, they grow up to be like girls. And then you wind up with a whole generation of whiny, narcissistic, only plans content creators screaming, Well, the real men. Well, <laughs> none of them want to date me. I don't have to tell you. And the ones that do have too many options. They're, they're worse than me. Well. <laughs> Uh, it was better for her to hear it from a woman, especially an Asian woman. Mm. American women generally seem to think they are more sagacious. Nope. 
<laughs> In Sir Kit's case, she is more sagacious. All right, all right. At the end of April, Adana called D. Nice, who promptly told her that she was at work and had no time for her except on Saturday afternoons. She knew the old swine was up to no good and wanted me around to advise her when she found out what it was. I set out to give Charlie a male role model and unwittingly became a father figure to his mother as well. Wow. I suppose that's a good thing for her since her own parents disowned her a decade back. More importantly, it's good for my budding relationship with Charlie's grandson to have his mother's confidence. What did she do to get disowned by her parents? Either they were that bad and she wanted to break the cycle or vice versa. A Saturday, April 29th, Denise and Charlie were with us discussing future living arrangements. We agreed to rent the cottage to Denise for the same as she's currently paying for their apartment. Our neighborhood will give Charlie a better class of kids to play with. Hell yeah. My wife, Sir Keat, looks forward to feeding him a more nutritious diet. Living so near saves time on transportation to daycare. Now his mother can just walk a couple hundred feet to drop him off instead of making the drive. Why does she have to walk? You just like open the door. Go hang out. Go, they- go run a few. Yeah. I mean, a six-year-old kid? Yeah. When I was, I mean, what, six years old, I was like in the first grade. Yeah. I didn't get driven to school. I didn't, you know, nobody picked me up. I had to walk Walk your ass home. Yeah, I did it. I mean, literally, I was completely unsupervised. It was awesome. Garbage picking fool when I was that age. (laughs) Well, that's how you find your first Orn pay more often than not. And I sold it at school. There you go. (laughs) And I had uh, eight black and white TVs in my room, all set to a different channel. Praying that the pay-per-view would just unscramble long enough to see a titty? No, no, no. (laughs) You would see titties on on, uh, Channel 9 from Canada. Oh, okay. Benny Hill? Every once in a while, you're like, ah, titty. Ah." (laughs) But I had 247, 56, 62, Channel 9, and there was like a couple other ones. So you were the original Martin McFly Jr. from Back to the Future Part 2? I had an entire wall. Nothing but tin foil, <laughs> and all the all of the uh, TVs were hooked to it because it was an antenna. <laughs> and my mom would come in. What's going on here? What is you? What are you doing? I'm like, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Sounds like a mad scientist experiment. <laughs> well, I was an evil. I'm an evil genius, man. I, I know. You want for me? That's how it begins. So, you ladies out there, if you got a a boy that you're raising and you just can't quite figure him out, and he does really weird shit like that, you may have a potential evil genius on your hands. But no worries. Mm -hmm. If he's got his head on his shoulders and he can undo the programming of public education, he too can save 520 lives. He continues, actually, I have to get him until I finish trapping all the feral hogs and piglets that could endanger him. Ah, okay. So he needs to have some company on the property because you never know when he might get gored. Shoot them. And then bake it in eggs. See how that works? Listen, I was watching on YouTube. These dudes are driving through these fields with goddamn machine guns mowing down these pigs. They're showing thermal. I'm like, oh, my God, I want to do that. That's <laughs> fucking fun. <laughs> he was piggy. <laughs> like, literally, they're driving along, and the, the pigs run out like, <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Looks like breakfast to me. <laughs> <laughs> Never, ever cook bacon naked. <laughs> it's, it's not a good idea. Not, 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 not a good idea at all. I have a cage full of these animals that will be the guests of honor at the Memorial Day Luau I invited Ooh. my neighborhood to. Yeah. <laughs> the stone lined pit is ready to go. Just to be safe, I'm teaching D Nice how to use a 45. <laughs> Winning. I had previously told Denise the story of how Adana frustrated Charlie's paternal rights and inflicted a lasting sorrow on him that he could never fully banish. She was creeped out by Adana and disliked her from the moment they met, but after she learned that she and Junior also deprived her son of the opportunity to know his grandmother for even a little while by telling him he was long deceased, she positively loathed them both. Ooh. Real nice lady. It's a powerful word, loathe. Yeah, loathe. It's, it's, it's up there with repugnant, you know? Mm. Charlie's cheating 304 expatriated withdrawn indignant fornicator entertainer called Denise at around 2.30, and she put it on speaker. Adano, the old slag, is lonely because Junior won't take her calls or answer the door for her, so now she wants to see her grandson. Denise turned her down cold before she even finished making the request. When she threatened to sue, Denise gave me a questioning look, so I had Charlie call out for her from across the room. Denise smiled and told Adana to call back in an hour. Her son needed her, so she had no time to talk. 
Yeah, that's how you deal with that, unfortunately. It's a long story why an ER nurse went to law school, but the short story is that I have a JD. I advised Denise that Junior had no custody rights vis-a-vis Charlie III because Junior and Denise had never married. The rights that Adana was trying to exercise would have been derived from Junior's rights, and since Junior has none, she has none. Mm. I told her that she could tell Adana, who was flat-busted broke, that she was welcome to sue if she could find and afford a lawyer in Texas. The old hosebag started by asking that Charlie, just Charlie, be sent to visit her, so Denise told her that Charlie's too young and would not want to be separated from his mother for any length of time mm. to visit a stranger, and under no circumstances would she trust her son alone with the woman who ruined his father. Ooh. Ouch! <laughs> Emotional damage! That stung so much her ancestors felt that slap. Wow, that was a good one, yeah. The plan was to not allow her to even see Charlie by agreeing to allow it only with conditions attached that would make it impossible for her to meet him. Mm. If she wanted to see him, she would have to come here, but she, Denise, did not have the time to be making arrangements with hotels for her lodging. Mm. Of course, Adana wanted to stay at her place. Denise informed her that there's no room for her in her apartment. Adana would have to pay the chaperone of her, Denise's, choosing, since she would not allow her son to be alone with a fat old hag she hates and distrusts. Fat Yowza. old <laughs> hag. Fog. Oh, fog. <laughs> I gotta write that down. The fog of war. <laughs> Uh, Adana swore and protested that this is unacceptable and hung up after announcing that Denise had not heard the last of this before Denise could tell her that my wife would be the paid chaperone. Later that day, Junior called me from a new number since I blocked his old one. His mother called him from a different number after he blocked her, so she, he changed his number. She wanted him to help her get access to his son. He wanted my assistance in getting Denise to let up on his child support payments in return for telling her to F off. I thought, what the hell is going on with these people? No freaking way. Wow. But came up with something else on the spot. Instead, I told him I wanted a few things from him first, but I'd call him in a half hour to discuss it with him. That way I would be able to get Denise's approval for my scheme and have the paperwork ready to put into effect before his mother called back. She laughed when I told her about it and agreed. It's like a weird Jerry Springer situation shaping up here. Unfortunately, when you have you know kids born out of wedlock and... You know, yep. Men raised by single mothers. The whole world is turning into Jerry Springer. I know. And this is a whole nut roll. And yeah. this involves three people who genuinely want to be in this child's life. Mm-hmm. And then you've got others who just feel entitled to being in this child's life. And women voluntarily sign up for this nut roll 24 7, 365. Yeah. This is insane. Why would you want to deal with this? You have so many plates spinning in the air, half of them are going to shatter. This is bad, right? (laughs) This is bad. This is bad. One thing that I required of him for Charlie's sake is as complete a medical history as can be had from his mother's side of the family. Hmm. That was not among my friend's personal effects for the simple reason that he had no reason to think it would ever be useful. Although I hope it never becomes an issue, I want it for two reasons. First, it should be on file with Charlie's pediatrician, naturally. Second, it should be available for genetic counseling should he ever decide to marry. Another valid reason. Mm. Some diseases, like cystic fibrosis, are guaranteed to manifest in offspring if both parents carry them in a recessive state. If one can avoid having genetic testing to find these things out, it should be avoided. Those companies sell info to some truly evil people. Listen, that cystic fibrosis shit, that's bad. That's, that's not, really bad. No, there was a girl in my middle school literally died on the stairwell. From oh, that. damn. Yeah. Really? Oh, when you yeah. were kids? Yeah, it was in eighth grade. <sighs> wow. So like She was on 13. her way downstairs to the nurse, had a fit, suffocated. They called an ambulance, and they, they called it when she got to the hospital. Hot damn, that's crazy, man. Savage, man. Yeah. Poor girl. Yeah, I feel for for her family, especially. Uh, He continues, The thing I needed Denise on board with was to convince Junior to give me what I need to shut his can't-understand-normal-thinking mother down hard. Two signed and notarized documents. The first one renounced all paternal rights regarding his son. The second gave me permission to adopt him. The plan is not to actually adopt him, but Junior does not need to know that. Mm -hmm. All he needs to know was that once he did that, he would be free of all future child support payments. What a greedy shit. He was willing to lose the right to see his son until he turns 18 to save six bucks a day. Well, you know what? Those are the decisions that haunt you when you get north of 40. 
Oh, yeah. Because you have all that time to look back and go, what a fucking turd I was. Yep. Just, just look at every corn star. <laughs> Every single one of them talks smack about the industry that made them a household name. That's right. Because they wanted the money and didn't think about the long haul. They want to mess around in the world of the bubbly pop. <laughs> no pun intended, of course. No pun intended. <laughs> but that's just sad, man. Like No amount of money is worth losing my kid. It's no. like about 180 200 bucks a month. Not to take a, a page from your book, but he could go suck like three dicks. <laughs> Knock that out half a Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could. It could. It could, yeah. Just go to the seediest lot lizard truck stop in town and be like, hey, I got to pay my child support. I got to see my kid. He can be the glory hole receptacle. <laughs> it looked just like Skeletor in that meme. All right, zip. <laughs> That's disgusting. Who am I to deny a man access to his children? <laughs> I'm going to give you access to about six million of mine if you do a good job. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. Uh, Lord, I apologize. Me with the pygmies in New Guinea. Hey, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> the third thing was just something I knew he couldn't do. Immediately get current on his overdue payments. Mm -hmm. boom, 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 boom. That way I could agree to the predictable demand that he would make, that I cover his overdue payments, thus giving him the feeling that he bested me and not the other way around. Mm. Squeezing blood out of a stone is too much of a pain in the ass, and I saw no point in having him jailed. Well, yeah, it, it is pointless to throw people who owe child support in jail. Besides, letting your opponent feel like a winner is always a good idea if it helps you win. That's uh, You can put that as part of your uh, safety briefing. That's a yeah, very good well, idea. Well, the thing is, is uh, you know, the older individual... He's uh, going for the emotional side. He wants access to the kid. Yep. The younger guy's dick thinking. Uh -huh. and he's like, I need to save money. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that $180 a month, you know, will really help me buy some more, you know, birth control. Yeah. Marijuana. Mary and Jane some beer marijuana. for bitches. Yeah, Meth, shut up. Meth and dicks. Yeah. Meth and dicks. It always gets down to that. Hey, you never know. Today's mm. day and age. Ugh. Before I agreed, I asked him to not tell his mother what we had done because I wanted the pleasure of telling her myself. He didn't want her to get his new number, and I think he was afraid to tell her how he sold her out. Not that she didn't have it coming. So he was only too happy to go alone. <clears throat> I could not forgive Junior for what he did to Charlie, but I could let go of the desire to take revenge for it. Not for his sake, but for my own, and for his son. Well, first of all, the universe will get revenge. Yeah. It, 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 it always does. Inevitably. I'd feel like shit if he offed himself and Charlie found out what happened and why. Denise was not interested in hounding him either. She had enough plates spinning without that one. Mm -hmm. Since we were all in accord, I called the Cheyenne lawyer and faxed him the appropriate documents from the Texas courts for him to have Junior sign. Mm -hmm. Once he overnighted them back to us, we were ready for Edna's call two days later. Edna was a hue of a different color. I have nothing against dogging her to the gates of hell. When she called back the following Saturday, my wife took Charlie to the kitchen to make chicken satay, one of his favorites. She said that she consulted an attorney who told her that she had the right to see her grandson. It was, of course, BS. Mm. Denise told Adana that things had changed since her last call and that Junior had agreed to allow his father's best friend to adopt Charlie. Mm. The documents were signed, notarized, and accepted by the Texas Family Courts. Oh, yeah, he's going full legal attack. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Excellent, Smithers. Release the hounds. <laughs> yes, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting insidious. It is. All right, all right. This is pretty good, man. Some, I love these stories, bro. some next level administrative violence going on. Yeah, here. yeah. So she would absolutely not be able to see him ever because her son was no longer his father. Ooh. If she had any questions, she could call the lawyer in Cheyenne. Kaplow. Double fatality, flawless victory. So th this guy's getting, like, revenge on everyone involved in his, his buddy's demise. Yes. Fuck yeah. And he's doing it with good intentions. There you go. Y you literally... You can't get much better than that. Yeah, you really can't get much better than that. You want to talk about some righteous indignation? Wow. This is it. Oh. She exploded. I know that mother fornificating son of a bitch is there. Put him on. I reached out my hand for the phone. Hi, Edna. I have a message from your ex from beyond the grave. 
gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now go pick up a cat at the pound, get yourself another box of wine, and live out the rest of your miserable life in poverty until you die alone. Nice. Oh. Stop. Don't touch me there. This is my no no square. Savage. Savage. Oh, Absolutely God, this is savage. A, and I was feeling guilty, you know, a bad for the grandmother, but, you know, hey, if she had a, a you know, a large hand in destroying Charlie 1.0, fuck the bitch. Yeah. So many people, they, they make these decisions not thinking about how this could possibly come back to bite them later, because mm-hmm. all they can see is what's right here. They don't see what's coming down the road. All these women getting divorced because I'm not happy. They haven't really experienced true unhappiness yet. Something like this could be waiting for you. Yes. R- remember that before it, you call your lawyer. Well, hang on. Uh, by, like, was it 2035, they're expecting 50 to 55% of women to be single and childless. Under 40, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Under 40. I, I mean, that is devastating. It is. Ah, uh, it's almost like the depopulation thing is real. Hmm. Who knew? Then I hung up on her and opened a bottle of the same kind of sherry used in Catholic high mass the world over and told Denise some stories that explained my choice of wine. It was just as fine as I remember it. I, too, drank wine at the church, my grandfather's church. We all did. Me and two other guys were like, I'm drinking out of the Jesus cup. <laughs> he chose... <laughs> Boy, I'm going to have some explaining to do, I'm telling you. Okay, hey, hey. So, so uh, Mr. Pub, you had more than your fair share of my blood, huh? Why don't we talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> I could make you a zombie. <laughs> zombie cop. Uh, the adoption scam may bite me on the ass. Ooh. Denise and my wife were in deep conversation, and I overheard the word adopt as I walked into the kitchen. They both immediately clammed up when they saw me. That can't be good. I think my wife may be scheming to get me to do it for real. It would have been futile to try to find out what was going on from them, so I grabbed another glass of the sherry to sip as I showed Charlie how to use his grandfather's creepy crawler's molds. Ooh. Yes, those were awesome. I loved those when I was a kid. They brought them back. Oh, they, yeah. Yeah, I just saw them over at uh, Big Lots not too long ago. I was like, no shit. I took a picture sent to my buddy. Like, dude, they brought back creepy crawlers. He's like, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Sr. and I spent dozens of hours talking about the goofy shit little kids think is so important while playing with that thing way back when. While waiting for a batch of plastic black widows and centipedes to finish cooking, I told him some of my more age-appropriate stories about his grandfather. When I found the Creepy Crawlers thing maker in the storage compartment under the motorhome, I checked online and found out they still make the liquid to cook into soft plastic bugs, etc. I ordered a couple 14-bottle packs of the goop, so we had enough to keep us occupied for days. Yeah. That's right. The two boys were up past their bedtime making worms, beetles, flies, etc. until a very happy six-year-old went off to bed, the proud owner of a 60-year-old classic toy that no other kid in his class had, while the older boy went off to bed to play with a 49-year-old toy from Thailand. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. All right. It seems like he's really, you know, going all in, being a father figure for this kid, and I think it's fucking great. I really do. Like I said, it's the ultimate honor for his best friend. Yeah. Really, it is. Yeah, the grandson that he never got to know, you know, being raised right with, with classic toys that he would approve of and not just being a screen zombie 24-7, learning how to shoot guns, take care of shit, handle pain, be a man. Fantastic. Like like Darren, I'm, I'm taking care of his daughter. Mm-hmm. And I'm making sure he's on point to do something other than work in a floral shop for the rest of her goddamn life. It's very important. Oh, but damn. Chief Kickabitch, uh, hats off to you, brother. Yeah. Phenomenal stuff here, really. And I really hope that you do keep these stories, you know, edit them, put them out, and I hope people buy them and they're inspired because it's a great tale of friendship and how it transcends everything. Even life death. and death, yeah. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing, wild man. And uh, keep telling us about it, because this is funny shit. Yeah, it is. We'll see you next time. Take it easy.